an ordinary cold is more infectious than leprosy itself or Hansen disease. You understand? People doesn't, most people doesn't know, you see? You see? And up to now, people, I, I, sometimes I have a difficult time in meeting people and they're, what is wrong with your hand? What is wrong with your hand? And you, you, you say, um, I say, well, um, okay, I suffer from Hansen disease, man. Yeah, what is that? Tuberculosis is something that is very catching. If I sneeze or you use my spoon or cup or so, you could contact, or kiss me, you could get it. But Hansen's disease is nothing like that. Nobody really knows how you is getting. So we try to avoid the doctors, the heavy burn, kind of hide it then, you know. And uh, well, eventually, they came and they warned my mom that if she didn't do it voluntarily, take her down there, they will send this big ambulance or whatever in front of our house. Then everybody will know what it was about, where she was going. But I had to go. I couldn't do nothing. She couldn't stop me from going. Well, in those days, they had a jetty with a bomb boat. They call it a bomb boat with a launch pulling it. And you have to be in this little boat to go down shack. Like if you know if the totem animals are well had to say because they were afraid you couldn't go on the launch that the other people were on, you know. Well I reached the shack. And to be honest, I was welcome. There were the Dominican sisters there at the time. About two months after that and I went there and I saw my sister. She looked like a monster, nothing like when we took her down there. She looked her face, her nose, her ears and everything was swollen. And, um, well, I always figured that what they did was experiment on her, you know, try to find some cure, or what, because she always volunteered anyway. Anytime they ask, they say they come up with some new cure or something, she would volunteer. Stuck her nose, the nose swole, stuck her ears, the ears swole, everything. I was down there and my father died, and I asked, to come out to see about various things and things. And they never gave me a pass until about three months after. So after three months, things had gone here, here, but I still get the pass and I come outside. The pass was for one week. And after that, I took a two weeks. Well, they had sent a chief ward man, you understand, to look for me, to take me back by force to the island. That is the kind of treatment that you had to, 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 to undergo. They were boys in the ward. They had no parents or anything like that. And I will, they'll come, they like me. I used to talk to them, very friendly. Not, not for any, none of them was ever out of the way with me or anything like that. They just liked me because my ways, the way I were with them. And they'll come and ask me, Miss Burge, could wash a piece of clothes with me. I said, sure, bring it, and I'll do it. There was nothing hard for me to do for anybody. I used to be scared myself, because any little thing came out on me, I thought that was it for me. I have it too, you understand? And I really didn't want to go through what she was going through. But I visited her every week. We all, every time we got together, we cried. He will come and he'll watch me and he'll go and run in and he'll come back and watch me and go and run in. But he told a friend of mine, he said, I like her, you know, I like her. He was 16, I was 17. He said, I like her. What we went through before that marriage, because we were always hiding where she was, we told our people, our friends, that she was in Tobago. Because we were, sh we were ashamed, not ashamed of her. We were ashamed of, of the people and, and the, what we will get back because they will think that they will, we figure we will be scorned because this is how these people, they were treated. My second um, baby died, born dead. Came to pull to and it was born dead. They had to take that baby away from me. And um, then I had Brenda, 
Sherry, that one up there, and Patsy. But I had the children here, you could see here, and I had two miscarriages. I used to lay down on my bed and take the sheet and put it over my head, you know, so you look just like if you was a, a dead corpse. There is a nurse that comes in and they begin to tell her, well, look, doctor say, well, you have nothing to fear and different things. And right away, they eye under the sheet and I listen, I, she says, um, what? He says that, but why they don't get this man out of this place? Why they don't get this man out of this place? So you see, you, you see the trouble that we had to go through. You understand? One in bank time. What's your brother here? I just went to buy your groceries, yeah. and then I'll bring across your food. I buy another bowl for you. I think it's just that some of them don't want to come out with the, with the truth. I think a lot of them know it. I wouldn't say all of them, but some of them know the truth. It suits them to keep people in this eternal fear, fear of the disease, fear of leprosy. The name of the word, that word rings a note, like the days when you had to walk with a bell around your neck. Leper, leper, you know, keep you in that, that light. So they would not uh, like gladly release people from that stigma. It can be done. I think the church can do a lot to erase the stigma, to help erase the stigma. The government had built her a house in Las Lomas, a little two or three bedroom place where she is at present. She continued to help her daughter, which the last daughter, which was having babies, which she was taking care of her grandchildren. So this was her life, from her daughter to her grandchildren, and now she's taking care of her great grandchildren. And in her position, she don't need to be doing this, but I suppose a mother's love, this is what you do. A mother do what you gotta do, you know. Like my mother, my mother has lived right here. She sees my mother every day. She's always studying like who, who care about she and who don't care about she. Most of the time she'll be thinking about like she daughters and how nobody will come and look for she and. But sometimes we might tell she well, you can't study them and all kind of thing. But I mean to say we just grandchildren and I she children who she want to love she. Yeah, and since she already know that we love she and we we don't um have a problem in, with the way she is. Shane, 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 Shane. Look like now my mother not wrong and things. She'll study like I go to work, sister go to work, sometimes my girlfriend go to work, you understand? My brother home. And she will really get nobody to really help. She like things she need then, like a like a woman are wrong then. Like if she needs to be then, you know. We have to say that we're so happy to see all of us gathered. Deep down in our heart we can feel something for that woman who is called Virginia Samuel. I find it's time people realize and don't treat people that suffer with this disease in the way, put them as if they're cast out or so. It, it's not like biblical disease.